Hello everyone, welcome to Chargers TV, Ronald Riggs, Justin Bryan alongside you here and JB, it's been an action-packed week uh, for, for both of our teams, uh, continuing with their pre-season training and there's been a few announcements at the club as well too, we'll kick it off JB with the announcement of Mark Nash being uh, signed on for 2021. Yep, and that's exactly what needed to happen with the women's program. Mark cultivated a list that was going to be very, very competitive for the 2020 season. Unfortunately, we just didn't happen to have a 2020 season. But no, I think it's just smart. Mark is a stalwart of the club, a stalwart of Tasmanian basketball. He's a leading face of the women's program at this point. Um, And it's great to have him back on board. Uh, He's able to help develop the juniors at this stage. He's really got a good mind for the game. He's able to cultivate uh, some senior players, whether they be locals or imports, come in and play for the club as well and uh, you know a ringing endorsement you know Mark's a very community minded person um, and again very junior orientated so the future of the club whilst the immediate is sorted uh, the future is going to be well developed as well so a great a smart signing and it's good to have him back on board. Uh, Absolutely and we caught up with Mark Nash uh, about a week ago and here's what he had to say. Yeah, it's really exciting for the future of the Hobart Chargers. The NBL One competition, we've, we've talked a lot about 2020 and the disappointment, but for us now, we're, we're back on the track, we're back on the spin bike, so to speak, with our squad and you know, really starting now to prepare for 2021. It, it is very early, um, but now that the club's starting to look forward uh, more formally, we'll start uh, conversations with players from 2020 and see who's interested for next year and, and really start putting the pieces of our women's team together. So the thoughts there from women's head coach Mark Nash and JB, obviously Mark happy to be back on board for 2021, but he's also happy that um, the women have now been hitting the gym and getting, and getting their classes in as well too. Yes, it's been good. Uh, joint classes with the men's group, but it's good to see the women getting there as well. I happened to be there for their spin class last week. I'm not going to tell you the results that I personally got out of it because they're really not worth reviewing. Um, but everyone had a red hot go, a red hot crack, um, and it wasn't just the young you know, players getting involved. Some of the senior heads of the club were getting there as well. Uh, Mark, as a senior coach, was there. Um, and it was really interesting and fascinating to see just how uh, they competed with one another. Some of the senior players sort of tend to hang towards the back of the group and just get on with what they need to do. Some of the younger ones really push themselves up in there. And, you know, I occasionally, you know, being the unfit person that I am, you know, taking a rest on the bike, you sort of observe the group and see what they're doing. And a lot of those young ones were really, really pushing the senior players, even in the men's group, you know, to really up their game and really get going. So, you know, the gym classes are paying off. And again, a shout out to everyone at All Aerobics Fitness that has been, help, that has been helping us out there with those classes. But the girls have been getting back into the gym, have been working out subsequently Ronnie local league started and it's evident on the floor uh, the work these girls and guys have been doing Uh, absolutely good segue into that uh, part of our segment here JB obviously the SPL is underway and great to see uh, all our Chargers players out on court play for their respective clubs now you and I cover the league um, for our independent channel that, that we do JB and after what this is the second week in since the pandemic hit, how have you seen uh, our Chargers players uh, go, gone throughout, throughout the two games that they played? Well, it's very evident to see who's working on their fitness, who's not, um, and certainly shown a real uh, level of difference between the players. I mean, seeing the women's games the last couple of weeks, uh, your Kylie McCauley's, your Shana Thompson's, your Alex Finlayson's, even your younger ones like your Maddie Stratzmas and your Eliza Vanderkamp's, you know, some of those are doubling up during the week. Um, but they're not having an issue. They're still rocking up, rocking up the training. They're still rocking up to the gym. They're turning up on game day. They're contributing, and they're contributing um, better than they were prior to the training and the off-season. So I really think this has really helped. In our men's program, uh, the athleticism has been off the charts to, mm, a ver- to the next level. Michelle Chopping has been at the games the last couple of weeks, yeah, um, and she's, uh, she's asked us, you know, we've covered the league for a few years now, um, and she wants to sort of gain where they're sitting at, but, you know, she's watching them defensively more than offensively because because you get a lot more freedom offensively. But just to see their ability to stick in front of a player, uh, to be able to use their hands, their reflexes, their reactions, everything like that, uh, has been a tremendous upgrade. And as far as the open offensive flow, I mean, we covered the Glenorchy game last week uh, with Liam Smith, Jack Stanwix. They were flying around the hoop. Uh, this week, we had Noah Stratzmo, we had Elijah Pawson, we had Lockie Boucher, we had Geordie Hargrave. They were flying around the rim as well, you know, really taking it to the next step um, and clearly showing that this level of training they're doing is taking them um, to another level and taking the next step, which is really helping them. So it's been good to see, again, only a couple of weeks in, so they've still got to get game flow, they've still got to get, you know, a, you know, 
know, timing and everything down packed, but from everything we've seen early, Ronnie, positive signs. Absolutely, and, and they've still got 16 rounds to go to our playing up, playing out the full 20 that they have scheduled for this season. Obviously, the in the juniors, we've condensed that down to nine weeks because of the pandemic, but, but the seniors will play it out for their full 20. And then, of course, a couple of weeks of finals, and of course, you can see all you can see all of the highlights and that on our independent channel. We'll give it a plug, JB. Yes, the West Coast Ball Connection. You can check it out there. You can also check out the Hobart Senior Basketball League our Facebook page where you'll find uh, previews and reviews of each round um, and you'll even find links to our channel of the highlights and the full games as well. So plenty of coverage from Ronnie, myself and our friend Glenn uh, jumping on commentary helps us out there as well. But if you want to actually keep up to date with some in-game footage um, and some in-game effectiveness of how the athletes are going so far, best place to check it out, no doubt. Absolutely. That's keeping us busy while we're not doing too much charges stuff. But speaking of charges stuff, now we had the Minister of Sport come down, Shane Howlett, and it was great to have the Minister down at the Kingbra Sports Centre last, last Thursday. Thursday. And we were lucky, uh, sorry, women's head coach Mark Nash was very lucky enough to present her with her own jersey, number 14. She's uh, she the got his favourite number, as she tells us. That's right. So, and we'll get the footage up up here of the presentation that that happened. And wonderful to have the minister of sport down. And of course, there was a, a big announcement along the lines of that as well, too, JB. Yes, massive announcement. The continuing grant program the state government has given the NBL one teams over uh, the last few years is continuing on, and we are thankful. Um, from the assistance of the sports minister and the state government for continuing to allow the game to grow at a grassroots level. Um, massive supporters of the charges over the last few years. It's great to have that continuing on. And actually a little bit jealous of the minister, Ronnie. She's been given her own jersey, her own number. We're still here. We've, we, get, we, get the gen, we get the general merch. But no, it's it's great. You know, it's a good endorsement. And I think that's something that, you know, basketball, and I mean, sport in general needs is to have that endorsement from the top level of government to say, look, we're here, we're behind you, we support you. And we want you to go further and develop. And, of course, a lot of people are going to tie this into the NBL announcement. Obviously, that's key as well. But I think it shows that there is still an investment at the grassroots level to continue to grow the game and keep it local-based and allow it to develop from there. You know, they don't want to be relying on imports. We don't want to be relying, you know, on outside sources to help us. We want to be able to grow and develop ourselves. And, you know, again, a ringing endorsement from the federal government. Again, we thank the minister um, for her preservation and her ability to help us out, which has been awesome. So that's going to continue to, you know, help us out. And, yeah, moving forward... It, only beneficial. Great to have him on board again. And of course, Hobart Chargers President Brett McKay was also on hand at the Kingborough Sports Centre last Thursday. Here's what he had to say about the grand grant announcement. Firstly, I'd like to thank the State Government and the Minister here for the announcement today about the continuation of the grant of the uh, $205,000 for the NBL1 clubs. It's certainly going to assist all of us in providing what you see out the back stadium. It certainly assists us being able to get on the courts as well and provide uh, top entertainment and top line basketball teams all around the state of Tasmania. Is this a continuation of the existing grants that were already in place or is this new money coming in? The, um, it's a continuation of the existing grants that were in place. They finished um, this the end of the financial year and this is an extension for this financial year with hopefully consideration for ongoing support into the long term future. Is it more money than before or the same? Or? Equivalent money as, as before um, and, and that's worked through as a good baseline to be able to support and get these kids on the, on the floor. Can you break down sort of what the money's spent on, like how, what are the numbers like in terms of how many kids and how many programs and clinics and that sort of thing? Uh, again, um, Stu would be best at breaking that down for you. And just to clarify, was it 250000 or 205000 uh, 250000 sorry. Yeah. So the Fort Stair from Hobart Chargers President Brett McKay and obviously JB, great to see, um, as as you said in, in the previous segment where the state government is totally supportive of all three NBL clubs here and it's um, fantastic to see. Yeah, it's the grassroots level of sport that needs to be kept, needs to be continued because at the end of the day, without a grassroots level, you don't get to the senior level and the elite level. So again, a shout out to the state government, thanking them for that. And that's something a lot of people need to realise. This isn't just a charges grant. This is also to the Thunder. This is also to the Tornadoes. So, you know, they're endorsing the two NBL1 men's clubs, the two NBL1 women's clubs. You know, this isn't just a bias, you know, because, you know, a lot of people play the North-South card. Let's be honest, it's there. It's not that. This is a full statewide grant. And the idea is to encourage 
encompass everyone in the local area you know, of Tasmania to maintain that grassroots level of play in the sport uh, and to keep it growing. It's as simple as that. Absolutely, JB. Okay, the NBL, obviously we talked a little bit about that in our previous show. And of course, uh, Tasmania is the 10th franchise in the National Basketball League for the 2021-2022 season. There's been a big competition and a big promotion in regards to naming the team. Now, we'll get the graphic up. You can head to www.mbltas.com.au, put in your three suggestions of of what you think the name of the Tasmanian team should be, and then you're in the running to win four season tickets, along with a signing inaugural jersey, meeting the team, getting a shout-out in the first game. What a competition to get involved in, JB. Not too bad, but I don't think they're going to accept the uh, Tasmanian JBs. So I really don't have a, t- I really don't have a chance there. Um, but no, there's been some terrific suggestions floating around. Um, obviously, you know, uh, former chairman David Bartlett um, put out the pride. That's actually a leading contender at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, the Tassie Timbers, I believe, is another name. Uh, the Tassie Lions is another one. The Tassie Brewers which, if anyone knows me pretty well, I think the Brewers is a damn fine name to have, um, and does encompass both the North and the South, or the uh, Bogues Cascade Divide. Yeah. So, um, no, there's plenty of good names floating about. Um, you know, the Handfish certainly doesn't seem to be no. there. The Devils um, is officially trademarked by AFL Tasmania. That was I've seen that in the media a lot the last couple of days, so obviously that's not going to happen. And the Tigers are taken by Cricket. So, you know, there's a lot of other practical names that are, that are there as well, which is good to see. Um, competition's heating up. Over 5,000 uh, independent uh, name entries, which is a hell of a lot of um, thinking. Yes. Um, that's uh, a name for every 100 people in the state at the moment. So, no, it's been a fantastic competition so far. Some really quality uh, names coming forward, and it's just going to be interesting to see what happens. They will, they will not be called the JBs, to my disappointment. Um, but, yeah, nonetheless, I think it's going to be an, a very interesting competition. Still a couple of weeks to go in that, folks, so make sure you get onto the website and cast your vote, or cast your suggestion, sorry, to see what the name will be. And, of course, I'm not sure what the process is after that, whether they shortlist it, then we vote again, JB, or we pick one at random. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting. Uh, shortlisting at least 5,000 names is difficult. Yes, um, at the best of times, and you know, trying to shortlist a hundred things, let alone five thousand things. So it's going to be interesting, but you know, it's going to be a name that encompasses the local vibe, the local spirit, all that sort of stuff, and also something that's going to be unique to the league. They're not going to double up on something that's already in the competition, and likewise, I don't think they're going to try and double up on anything that's already, you know, say in the NRL, the AFL anything like that. So it's very interesting. I think a broader list of names is good. I'd be surprised whether they go through and just cross off the names that are already taken uh, or some that may be even obvious choices. I wouldn't be surprised whether they sort of want to go a little bit left of skew there um, and just make it truly Tasmanian, truly unique. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. I certainly do not want to be the person that has to shortlist uh, all of those suggestions, that's for sure. We certainly will take ourselves out of that uh, equation, JB. Absolutely. Or, all right, you can follow the Hobart Chargers on their social media. You can give them a like on Facebook, you can follow us on Twitter, you can give us a follow on Instagram, and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. So don't forget to keep up to date with all the goings on here at the Hobart Chargers. Now, JB, before we go, of course, we had Rex the Rhino in. Last unbelievable uh, stuff we did in our in our last show. It was great to have him here. I can't believe you missed him. That phone call must have been pretty damn important, Ronnie. It was very important, JB. I must say we are doing some business on the side yeah, here in Chargers TV. Flat out at the moment. Um, so, but even though it is the off season, we're, as we mentioned, covering the local leagues, allowing us to get a good grade on the players, mm. even some of the coaches that are involved in the club. But yeah, there's a, still a lot going on in the off season. It certainly hasn't been a rest day. I mean, we're able to pump out a show once every two weeks. That should tell you how much is going on so you know almost as busy as a full season uh, absolutely it nearly feels like normal jb and of course we had as i said we had rex in the, on the show and we're going to cover his journey uh to, to to drop a few pounds so to speak jb a few just a few. Quite, quite a lot. Quite a lot, I believe, yeah. <laughs> now, it'll be very interesting to see. Rex is wanting a transformation. I mean, mm. rumours of his death are greatly exaggerated. Rex is alive and well. Absolutely. It's just a matter of how much of Rex we're going to lose. I think Rex mm. is going to uh, tone up, and I think Rex wants to take the court for 2021. I think that's a bit of a stretch. Um, but it's certainly not as much of a stretch as the jersey Rex is currently wearing. He's certainly going to be cutting down. He's putting in the effort. Uh, we do have a bit of footage floating around of that. Stay tuned. You will see some of that a little later on in the year. But no, Rex is busting his backside to get into shape and get fit for 2021 when the charges are officially back on the court. 
um, after a bit of a hiatus run. It's going to be good to see, and it's going to be even better to see Rex running courtside. Oh, absolutely. We can't wait and follow that story uh, with us here at Chargers TV of the transformation of Rex Rhino. We can't wait. He's, to- actually, he's actually training, surprisingly, filming on a Friday night. I would have thought Rex was out training, uh, doing more than a couple of 12-ounce curls, if you get what I mean there. So he's um, he's out. He's working out. Couldn't join us tonight, but we're going to try and get Rex in during his journey, and we'll try and get some updates on that. Absolutely. Stay stay tuned here on Chargers TV. On behalf of Justin Bryan, I'm Roel Riggs. This has been another edition of our preview show or our update show, really. And we'll see you again soon.